can have uh, you have some of our colleagues that are going to be presenting today Lucas, Chris, Nicola, Jean Christophe, and Julie. They are all either part of the tech scene in Brussels as uh, promoters, as entrepreneurs, or supporters. Everybody has a role, and I thought that it was a good idea to give, make them speak, take the advantage that they were coming so that they could speak. Uh, how many of you know a uh, startup from Brussels or Belgium? Oh, one Belgian. An adopted Belgian, somebody that has not come with us. Who knows of a startup from Brussels or Belgium? Oh, I'm, which one? No, it doesn't count. Ah, it doesn't count. See, you have to cheat. Um, well, the thing is that there's much more in Brussels than naked boys, uh, chocolate, and beer, you know? There's a, there's a lot of startups. There's a lot of things going on that nobody expects Nobody thinks that there's so much going on in Brussels. To give you some examples, when we talk about, you, you guys know TED, the show about thinking with good, really nice presentations. TEDx Brussels is the largest TEDx in Europe. We have over 2,000 people attending. Uh, we just had an exit last year of a very uh, small company that deals with real estate ads. And it's only Belgian, and only for the Belgians. It was sold to a German firm, Axel Springer. Only 80% of the company was sold for 127 million euros. That's not bad for a small exit in a small country like Belgium, huh? Uh, when everybody's talking about going international, we have a lot of cases that you will, my, some of my colleagues are going to be presenting, but we just had the news two days ago that you may not have heard about because it has been obscured by Microsoft, by Nokia maybe, but one of our colleagues, Antoine Perdant, with his company Knowledge Plaza, which is a company that uh, manages knowledge for big companies, they just bought their competitors in Switzerland. They did an acquihire and they got their competitors to join board for half a million euros. So all these things, nobody expects them to happen, and especially they don't expect to happen to have a lot of people in the startup world, and a lot of events happening in Brussels. Uh, one of the main events in Brussels, and really the beacon around which all this is happening and being organized and promoted, is the Beta Group. And to present the Beta Group, I'm going to give the floor to Julie Foulon, who is the managing director. Hi, everybody. Mike. Is it working? Yes, it's working. Hi, everybody. My name is Julie Foulon, and I'm the managing director of Beta Group. And I'm going to present to you Beta Group. So that's the team. That's me and Ramon. So if you want to contact me, don't hesitate. We, we don't see the Twitter account, but mine is Gerlich, and Ramon is uh, Ramon Suarez or Beta Cowork. So uh, what, what is Beta Group? Beta Group is a non-profit organization created five years ago by a guy called Jean Derelli, who is co-founder of Fourank, a very successful startup in, in Belgium, and he decided to stay uh, in Brussels. We have just one objective, to help startups to be successful by giving them some visibility. Because it's very difficult for startups to be, uh, to be known, uh, to stay in their garage, I would say. So we want to, to help them and to promote them. So why we did that? To promote tech startups and tech entrepreneurship. Uh, and also we want to gather talented people from the web ecosystem. We are very, uh, there's a large, there's a lot of people in Belgium, entrepreneurs, software uh, developers, crafty thinkers, web designers, publishers, or business angels. And we want to gather all these people. And how do we do that? So we have three activities. We have the events, we have Beta Invest, and we have a co-working space, co space called Beta Cowork. For the events, uh, you have to understand that in Belgium, the beta group community is more than 7,000 people. 7,000 web entrepreneurs passionate about internet, new technology, online media. And to gather these people, this community, we organize events like beta group events, during which six startups uh, come on stage and present their activities in five minutes. 
And um, with Ramon, we were thinking about that just earlier. More than 240 startups already did a presentation to a beta group event, though that's a lot. And this month, we will do our uh, 40 seconds beta group events in five years' time. Then we do workshops on different themes like research and development, how to recruit in a tech startups, or um, the 3D printing, for instance. We also do tech guru conferences. Uh, we invite very successful web entrepreneurs, and he, and he shares with the audience uh, his experience. Uh, you have to understand as well that during these events, you have in average 500 people coming. So it's a lot. Uh, we, this, this year is very new because uh, I'm a girl, and I think that ladies have a place in ICT. We want to organize a women events to promote the women entrepreneurship in new technologies. That's very import important. So to follow all these activities in Brussels, we have a tech agenda. You go to beta, betagroup.be, and then you follow the agenda. So Beta Group is a massive network. The second activity is Beta Invest, because we want also to gather web investors and web startups who want to raise money. And I know that it's very, very, very difficult. So for that, we did a partnership with B Angels, which is a very famous uh, and successful resort or business uh, angels in Brussels and in Europe. And in average, we do three events per year. And now I give, I know that's uh, Beta Cowork. Yes, regarding Beta Invest, which is the, which is uh, as Julie said, one of the most important bus uh, uh, business angel networks in Belgium. It's not the only one. There's more business angel networks, and there's something that people don't know about because by nature is not known about. It's private investors that don't even sign up themselves to these kind of networks because they want to stay private. There's lots of family funds, and you have to think that Belgium is a country where people have more money in the bank of the whole of Europe. There's over 70,000 euros per person, times 11 million people, okay? It's not a big country, but they do pack nice wallets, okay? Um, one of the things also, it's like, you see all these companies, some of them are, some of the companies we have are being invested in through Beta Invest, or they're being invested through the help we give them in Beta Cowork, or they just don't need that kind of investment, of help. You have WooRank, which was created by the founder of the Beta Group, and it's so successful, he had to step down <laughs> and just concentrate on his company. They are hiring every month, they're growing, they're already about 20 people, and they're, they're, their main customer are in the US. So this is a Belgian company going global, going to the US without moving from home. Because one of the main things that we have in Brussels that, and in Belgium that most people don't realize is a very good talent and that wants to stay there. So that you don't have to go for the fight that you have to go when you are in San Francisco. And you have some of the companies that have sprung out of the beta group and out of the co -work, our co-working space that have, managed, that have moved to San Francisco. So one of them, for example, is Scanadu. You probably have heard about them recently. They, they've been recently in, um, on TechCrunch about, and on all the other media because they have uh, finally produced the, 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 the medical tricorder, like in Star Trek, you know? You put something here and they pull this machine towards you and it gives your temperature, your beat of, of your heart, your volume of oxygen on the, on the blood, all that. This is a company that has come out of Brussels by the guy that created TEDx Brussels also, okay? Um, you have other companies like TweetSpark, or Storyfy that you may have heard of. And uh, they are all born in, Br in Brussels and the, Belgi and, and the greater Brussels area, which basically is the whole country. Because <laughs> you, know, you get out one hour or an hour and a half and you're out of the country. You have to think about that. And um, that's what you get also when, when you see our tech events. You see a lot of them happening in Brussels, or most of them happening in Brussels, but there's also more things happening around in different cities. And now the Beta Group is growing to cover all those cities and to give an opportunity to the people to participate in their own city. Um, the Beta Work was an initiative that Jean and I started because we wanted to work in a space like that. If you don't know a co-working space, basically it is a shared office where people, and especially the people running the co-working space, are trying to help the members 
to improve their professional life. So basically, my role, what I do, and you see that it's written in my running shoes, is I'm a serendipity accelerator. I accelerate the situations. I make happen the situations where there's going to be a, disco a, a discovery. It's out of pure luck. There's going to be a discovery that is going to be positive for one or two people, people participating. You may have heard that sometimes it refers to win-win. Sometimes it's just connecting, facilitating, getting people in touch. That's how, for example, TweetSpark managed to raise $1.2 million. Why? Because we got them in touch. They had a, they had a kick-ass product first, a great entrepreneur, and then we helped them get in touch with the right person to help them uh, with the fundraising and to lead that fundraising round. Uh, in the co-working space, it's been open for almost three years. It's going to be three years in, in November. We have over 200 members. It's the most successful and better known. It's a reference co-working space in Belgium. And uh, you will see us a lot presenting and speaking in different global and European conference. Together with that guy, Jaime, from Sevilla. Say hi, Jaime. We're writing a book to help other people follow in our success and, our, and not to repeat all our screw-ups, which are many, OK? Many. Uh, we're, gonna tr we're trying to help them uh, have, create more successful spaces, like we have done in Brussels, he has done in Sevilla, and other people are doing all around the world. Uh, we, you can check, it, check us out on the website, through, the, through Twitter, however you want. But the most important thing is if you ever come to Brussels, just come. Take your computer, don't forget your charger, and just come and work with us and talk with the people that are there. That's gonna, what's going to help you the most and what's going to open your eyes to everything that is happening around you. Same thing goes if you want to come to the beta group. If you have a startup that wants to present in Brussels, you just go to the beta group website, fill in the form, and shoot me and Julie an email, OK? And we will make that happen. Hector Flores has already presented there. Uh, we had uh, more Spanish people presenting, but people from Germany, people from the, from, uh, oh, the Netherlands, from other countries, from France. There's a lot of people from around Europe coming to present. And you have a really good opportunity there to be showcased in front of 350, 400, 450 people. The largest we have ever had was 12,000. Uh, 1,200 people, 1,200, 1,200, uh, <laughs> in, in, in one of our Christmas events, in a demo day. Um, same thing goes for the beta group. If you're ever around, come. If it happens that it's, you're there, come. It's free, there's beer, there's chips, and there's a lot of good networking. A lot of good people that are just open there, that just want to talk about what they're doing, talk about what they want to learn, talk, talk about tech and startups. <coughs> Some of the other initiatives that we're running, it's either we are involved as part of the board, or we're supporting them. Sorry, I need some water. <coughs> it's startups that be. Startups that be is the Startup America or the Startup Europe of Belgium. Basically, what it does, it gets to, it puts together, it tries to bring together all the entities that are doing anything to promote tech entrepreneurship in the country together. Okay, it's not taking over the role of those entities. It's just trying to do things that can help them promote them and making us talk more with each other, which is something that doesn't happen all the time because we're all busy doing our thing and making things happen. Because that's the main characteristic of the things that go around the beta group and all the events you're going to see here. We care about doing and making. It's not about talking. It's about doing. In every conference we do, even when we do a conference, everybody has to come out with something practical they can do. It cannot be only theory. Uh, we have a big event happening in November, in September, the 19th of September. You're welcome to come. You'll see a lot of the people that are organizing stuff in Brussels together throughout a full day. Um, another thing we're organizing is the Global Entrepreneurship Week. It will be in November, and it will be a full week promoting entrepreneurship. Lots of people getting together, lots of events. We're, we're setting up mentorship. We're setting up uh, all kinds of things 
really, it's going to be like everything you can imagine that can happen around entrepreneurs is going to happen during that week, including an event for women that Julie is organizing. Yes, it's an event for women. Mike? It's, it's an event for women, but also for all the women in uh, Entrepreneurship Week. And uh, we will do some workshops and, um, and a special workshop during which ladies will, will learn how to code their own projects. So it can be a blog or e-commerce, etc. We will have a minister coming, which happens to be a woman. And we have also invited Nelly Cruz which we hope will come. She has already helped us, and has, she has already participated in an event at our co-working space when she accepted to do something that for me is extraordinary. She made for a full hour after the event with 10 startups, just to talk with them and see what they wanted to do. How could Europe help them? And the question that you see her asking of the t all the time, what would you do if you were me? One of the things, of the, of the big things helping us network and travel around, this is maybe like what we're doing here with the beta van. If you follow the hashtag beta van, you will see the pictures and the stupid things we say. Uh, one of the things that happen is the web mission. You have here uh, Nicolas Frenet, who is one of the guys that has created the association that runs the web mission. Oops. Let me see if I can get to a browser. Yes. You can start talking, Nicola. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you, Ramon. Uh, I'm Nicholas. I'm an entrepreneur myself, and I'm also one of the organizers, as Ramon mentioned, of the web mission. Uh, the web mission started in uh, 2009 by a couple of uh, friends and also people around who met at the Beta Group. So we are actually born at the Beta Group, uh, who decided to go to San Francisco and to see what is the ecosystem over there, compare it with Brussels and Belgium, and to see what they can pick up as an uh, interesting. Uh, uh, cool startups, but also interesting um, feedback on their current projects, and then come back and implement that in Belgium. Uh, we started in uh, 2009 and uh, with 12 people. We have done now seven uh, web missions. Uh, the latest one was one month ago, again to San Francisco and uh, the Valley, but mainly uh, the web mission is also focusing on the US but also going further with a partnership to work with uh, startups of BE towards Asia. Um, here I will just go, that's why we published actually the link we will of the startups that we have uh, visited. The idea of visiting startups is not is also learning from small but better known startups worldwide, what we can pick up and how we can implement that uh, over in Belgium, but also to meet other startups over there and uh, entrepreneurs. A lot of the participants are also working together and creating new projects. We have some great uh, uh, experiences. For example, the developer at uh, one of the developers at Check This was a participant at uh, the web mission, I believe, in 2011, and he joined the team of, web, uh, of Check This. Uh, Check This now recently also launched a cool, very cool uh, new application, which is called Frontback, and it is now used by a lot of uh, celebrities uh, worldwide. And in two weeks' times, I think there are already at 200k downloads. So I think uh, it's a very cool uh, application on iOS at this moment in time that you should follow. Other uh, interesting uh, startups that participated are in the social media sphere. They are still in Belgium. For example, we have Pictawall, but we also have Tweetful Pro that uh, developed their projects on uh, social media, uh, Twitter. Uh, and Facebook uh, messages, and they are promoting their bu their business from out of uh, Belgium. Uh, another part of the of the web mission is, of course, to see what are the startups, the Belgians who are in the Valley or in in New York, and uh, we also we organized one with uh, to Sevilla with Ramon, and what they are doing there and what we can pick up from them. A couple of them here are mentioned. Um, I'll, you see here some names of startups that we visit: Bitly, Boxy, Buffer. Uh, Fab.com is very interesting because we visited them just after the a new uh, uh, round of funding, which they pivoted and now became very much successful. Uh, Instagram, we visited uh, two Belgians who are working there. One was Tim van Damme, who is also one of the advisors at Check This, who recently uh, moved to um, bug, uh, Dropbox. But uh, especially what's interesting is to see what the, the developers at Instagram, uh, the Belgians, we know there, what they are doing there and uh, how did they came there, what is their experiences and things like that. Uh, 
Uh, some other cool startups, I think uh, Ramon has mentioned already, Livestream is also one of the visits that we did in uh, New York, which is uh, run by a Belgian. Playfish is, uh, been, uh, was run by a Belgian and sold to Electronic Arts, which is one of the, the greater uh, Silicon Valley stories. You, and then you have uh, Scanadu, Storyfy, TweetSpark, like, uh, let's say, Ak Akia from uh, Dries. Uh, Sunrise. And Sunrise. And Sunrise, yes, not mentioned here, sorry, but we didn't visit them yet. Sunrise of uh, Jeremy Leverne, who is a very cool application that also got great traction at this moment in time, um, which is an application to, to manage automatically your agenda on different uh, platforms. So we're visiting basically startups, but also larger corporations like Facebook and Google, uh, Microsoft, uh, to see, of course, yeah, what we can pick up, and if this, for example, with startups, there's a possible partnership um, that could happen. Um, interesting to mention is that the next web mission is going to Asia. We're planning that now in collaboration with uh, startups.be to reach even a more larger public um, and to promote ourselves more on a larger scale. This is going to go to Singapore and to Sydney and Melbourne, most probably by the end of November. If you want more information, you can always contact us as Belgians at webmission.be or on the website webmission.be. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Nicolas. And uh, we're back. Yes, great. One of the things you would see is that everything we stress a lot, everything has to do with network. You would not believe that such a small country, we don't know each other, but it happens. Uh, there's a very big cultural divide because of the different languages. And you have to think that a lot of people I don't know if you may have heard that in my accent. I'm not Belgian. I'm like kind of like 100% from Madrid, you know? People, Julie is French. Jean de Lely, our founder, was also French. The another guy that I'm talking about now, Leo Exter, he's Russian, you know? We really have learned the power and the strength and the importance of building a good network. And a good network is not giving cards away. A good network is going out, eating with people, having a drink, having a nice talk, uh, interesting yourself, for genuinely interesting yourself uh, to learn what uh, they are doing and to show what you are doing. That's part of it too. And you'll find a lot of interesting people. One of the networks that we, so in the beta group we try to do and with the, oh, some of our events, you'll see that we do that physically. Even here, we're getting to learn each other, to, 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 to know each other much better with this beta van mission. Um, we start up that you is a world, it's a European network for entrepreneurs to meet virtually. So it's just what you'll find starters and some investors, people that want to launch their idea or they have just started launching their idea. You will find them here talking about it. Uh, and one of some of the ne of these networks that are very Im interesting and you probably, some of you have participated in one, you all have heard about them, are accelerators. There's a lot of accelerators in Europe, but there's also some really good ones happening in Belgium. They are a good network, not only because of the people that you have as mentors, or they come to the accelerator program to, show, to, to explain how to do things and how they have done their own things, to, to, to help you learn from their own experience. It's very important because you meet your fellow entrepreneurs and you build a very strong relationship with them. We, around Brussels, you have Nestap in Wallonia and Idea Labs in Flanders, for example, and then in Brussels, Tata Chan, Julie is going to present the Microsoft Innovation Center, Brussels. Thank you. Hello, so the micro Microsoft Innovation Center in Brussels is an accelerator, and uh, actually Beta Group is part of it. And uh, so they, um, well, it's an, an acceleration program and it's uh, sponsorized by Microsoft and the Brussels region. Uh, Brussels region and also the ABG. Brussels Entrepreneurship Agency. Thank you. <laughs> and that's it, really. Okay. Huh? Brussels Enterprise Agency. <laughs> And um, you see, when, when you talk about accelerators and networks, most people think like, all these people, but they're just business people. They don't have anything to do with development. They're just marketeers and everything. It's not true. You find that in our events, you will have real investors with real money, putting money. In one of the first startup weekends we organized, we had somebody putting 50K on the table on, the first sat on Saturday for a company already. Okay? There's people around us that you will not notice, 
because they don't want to be noticed, but they come and they give you money for ideas, early stage. Huh? And then, of course, if you have a business model that is already proven and there's money coming in, they'll give you a lot of money. But who wants it if you already have money coming in, no? Or uh, unless you want to grow really big, of course. Uh, one of the things that you'll see is we have really good developers, too. One of them is sitting there. He didn't dare to come and, 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 and talk on stage. Huh? Cedric Donkels. You will see him in the co-working space. He's gotten, he's the only one, he's one of these guys that comes and thinks, oh, I'm not gonna get a lot of clients here because there's a lot of other developers around me. He's taking more work that he can manage. And, but he does manage, eh? he's very good, very professional. He's just getting some more people to help him, okay? Um, and then another place, another place for, uh, for uh, where you find a lot of these more tech-oriented Talent is the hacker, hacker space in Brussels. You have a few hacker spaces in the whole of, of, of the Belgium, and uh, Lucas is going to talk about uh, the hacker spaces. Lucas, you can drive your conversation here. <coughs> okay, so so uh, today I'm going to talk about the hacker space of Brussels and hacker spaces around the world. Um, but first, we need to get something out of the way. First, we have to define what a hacker really is. A hacker is not a derogatory term for computer criminal. It's someone who tinkers with technology, who likes to make existing technology do some new stuff. He likes to teach other people through his skill, and he likes to improve his own life through the technology that he has learned. <coughs> who is the hacker space for? Before I answer this slide, I would like to ask you, who here has a smartphone? Chances are 99% of the people do. Who here has ever written an app for a smartphone? Okay, who here would like to learn to write an app for a smartphone? The people that now have raised their hands and had, had not raised their hands to the previous question, they are the people we are looking for because you are the people that we can still teach something. The space is open to anyone and everyone. There is generally three kinds of people that come to the hacker space. First, we have like the geeks, the social coders who come here for fun and some social interaction. Then we have the people who have the problems in their code, they have worked upon at home. And then we have the people who want to learn a new skill and improve upon their existing life. <coughs> so, how many hacker spaces are there? Currently, there are 232 registered in Europe alone. In America, we have about 270, I think. And we even have eight hackerspaces scattered all over Africa. <coughs> so, what is a hackerspace about? It's about everything and anything technology related. It can even be a sushi cooking workshop as long as there is some technology involved. We are all about having fun and working with interesting stuff. And the fun usually comes from the interaction with other people, which you don't get if you sit in your garage on your own. <coughs> so, my personal background is uh, that I joined the Hackerspace three years ago, when I was 16. Uh, through the Hackerspace, I found a great creative boost, and also I learned to believe in myself and to believe that nothing was out of reach to do. So, in the end, it gave me such a good feeling that I thought maybe I should become a member and I've never looked back. It's been the best decision I've made in my life. <coughs> so, current projects. Uh, there is one project called the Wandering Star, which is a server we made that fits into a flight case. So, it's made for this kind of events. You just take the flight case, you take it with you, you take some cables, once you come here, you put it on a table, you cable it up, and it's ready. You just turn it on, it finds its own. <coughs> then there is aquaponics. Aquaponics is uh, creating a closed cycle of life. It's uh, an intertwining between fish and plants. So you cre create a closed ecosystem from fish that provide excrements, and the excrement of the fish is going to feed the plants. And this way, you can have cheap vegetables in an urban environment at low cost. <coughs> we are now also getting into 3D printing, which may be an interesting technology, but we are still 
looking to expand upon it. Our future prospects are to grow and in our growth uh, to be able to provide even more support. All our technology belongs to us for now, but in the future we also want your technology to belong to us. We want everything to be accessible for hackers because then we can build a world 2.0, one that is better than the one we are now in, where there is no more closed source. <coughs> oh, yeah, we went too far. So, uh, if you want to find out more or get in contact with Hackerspace, we have our uh, communication there. Or if you want to ask a question informally, you can find me at the white tables at the entrance. Thank you. Thank you, Lucas. Uh, what he hasn't said is that he was the one that donated the 3D printer to the hackerspace so that we could start having, you know, playing around with it. I'm the new, he's 19, he's this expert, I'm 43, I'm the noob. What can I do? Uh, one of the things that you think is like, which you, talk, you think about hackerspaces, it's all men and they're all, you know, long ponytails, hard rock, black t shirts, lots of club mate, which is true. That part, I have to say it's true. But what you forget about is that there's a lot of women coding around us, too. And Chris is going to introduce us to one of these initiatives that brings more women to code, which is Rails Girls Brussels. Hi. So my name is Chris, and I'm a Spanish living in Berlin. And during the day, I help uh, tech startups and co-working spaces get rid of things that are not their main goal. And during night, I help projects like Rails Girls go somewhere else and yeah, spread the rumor. So I have only three minutes, so I am going to say just three things. So first one is for what you can see here and for you, you can see all around here, tech is a trend right now. Everything, all the startups, most of the startups are related to technology and there is a lot of money and talent invested in this industry. The second reality is that more men than, than women can read or write code. And you can see it here. I see two women uh, listening to this talk. And, and I mean, we have one shower for girls and three showers for men here. So you can see the ratio there. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say that disappeared from the presentation <laughs> is that English is a new code language. Code is a new English, I'm sorry. Um, we are here. and. None of us are natives, and we all can speak English, and that's what gives us the opportunity to come here. Most of the contents here are made in English. You need to be able to speak code if you want to have something to do in, in this new trend. And it's a pity that many more men can do it, and there are some initiatives to teach women to do it as well, like Rails Girls, which is a non-profit global organization doing this voluntarily all around the world. Uh, in two days, you can teach women the basics, and then if they get excited, they can go on and they can join hacker spaces or startup meetups and so on. So here was the contact. OK, that was it. So it one, one, I was really impressive. We, ha we organized the first Rail Girls Brussels at the Betaco Work, and we had over 40 women come in. We didn't expect to fill up the room, and we had to put more chairs because we didn't have enough, bring in more switches and cables to connect all the computers. The Wi-Fi went down, went down when they started installing all the, all the software. So you can imagine it was shocking, but it's good because it shows that there's a lot of women looking out to learn and to share the knowledge. There's not only people that have never coded, a lot of people that attended were people that already knew how to code in other languages. And they just wanted to pick up quickly how to do it in Ruby. Uh, one of another hacker or uh, pro coding uh, event that we have is in Open Hack, and Julie is one of the promoters of it, so she's, she's the one going to present it. Yes, we, we, we do that now in Beta Group, it's called Open Hack, and I do like this concept. It's Yannick, the main developer of Check This and Front Back, the application, who came to me and said, oh, look, Julie, that's very great, you're doing Beta Group events, workshops, tech group conferences, but there, there isn't like very geek events. And I was like, oh, that's, that's true. We, we're in the tech uh, ecosystem, but there's no geek events. So we decided to, do, uh, to join OpenAC. So there's, a, in average, 40 or 30 developers coming to a place. They do a round table saying, well, I'm developing in PHP, uh, 
uh, CSS or whatever, <laughs> whatever the language, and I've got a problem. Yes. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> and I've got a problem in this code. Uh, can someone help me on this script? And then uh, people are doing teams and they are helping each other. So that's great. It's done. That, uh, we do we do that every month now. And uh, if you want, if you're coming to Brussels, please join us. And uh, we could not talk about mo some of these events without mentioning everything that has to do with mobile. You already heard about check this front back. If you have iOS, you should try it. Definitely, it's really lots of fun, very creative. And um, well, another thing that we have is a lot of events related to mobile. Uh, it's Tanguy de Lestre who organized these events mainly around Mobile Monday, which is the one that you probably have an event like that happen in your country. It is also happening in Brussels regularly. But then they also did what used to be the DroidCon, and now it's a user interface event for mobile devices. And they run all other kinds of, of mobile events. Link to mobile, it's the last uh, speaker of the night, who is Jean-Christophe Cuvillier with uh, his startup, Pick the World. You can just click. Start talking. Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. So my name is uh, Jean-Christophe, but uh, everybody call me JC because it's easier to pronounce. Uh, so I'm the founder of uh, Pictawall. So as you can see, uh, Pictawall is a live feed of uh, pictures and uh, videos that have been shared uh, on social network during an event and that we give to the event organizer to display them on big screen uh, or on your website or even on uh, Facebook pages. So I'm not here, uh, I'm here to talk about uh, the journey of uh, an entrepreneur uh, in Belgium. So first of all, uh, I began with uh, my parents giving me a Commodore 64 instead of a gaming console. Uh, for those who are too young to understand, uh, it means that I had to code my game my, the game myself. Um, then uh, when I began to work, uh, I had a successful uh, communication agency. Uh, every be, every be, everything was working fine. Yeah, it was boring. Uh, so I began to uh, follow all the entrepreneur uh, thing in Belgium. I began to uh, go to uh, the, beta, the beta group and just seeing what happened in the Belgian scene. Uh, it was very interesting, very uh, refreshing, and uh, it gives you a lot of ideas and, to, uh, and energy. Uh, next step I did is I joined the beta co-work, uh, and I just uh, I didn't have to find work there. Or I had already uh, plenty of work, but just the fact to sit in a co-working space and people asking you, ah, what do you do? And then you explain, and then you ask back, what do you do? And then you discover a lot of great people, uh, and again, you can, uh, instead of working on your boring stuff, you can find more interesting project to work on. So after that, uh, it went fine for a few months. Then I joined uh, an event that you might all know, uh, which is the Startup Weekend, which is a very, very cool event. Uh, so I attend to that. I present an ID just for fun, uh, which was Pictawall. Uh, we did the whole weekend, and during the weekend, you, had, you have to contact potential customers. Uh, the problem we had at this moment is it was not about having leads. Uh, we had customer already, so it was not a question of uh, winning the startup weekend. It was just a question on how will we deliver a good product to these customers. So after the weekend, of course, we had to work a lot to deliver a very, very good product. Uh, what we did next is we participated to uh, the MIC uh, boost camp that uh, Julie explained. So you see, there is a lot of things you can attend, and it's a really good idea to attend those. Uh, you will have some, so, some, of, some part of each of these events will be things you already know, but the thing is you will discover more, it will be challenging, you will see n other people, and really it's, uh, it's really important for entrepreneurship and really good. So that was uh, our journey. Now, uh, average uh, eight months after, uh, we had uh, very su successful clients. Uh, like we had the chance to 
uh, to be there uh, as a service for the Tomorrowland uh, Festival. That was really, really great. Uh, we have some other customers like Nutella, uh, great chocolate. Uh, not as good as Belgium chocolate, of course, but uh, still is good. Uh, and airlines company like uh, Brussels Airlines. Nocilla for the Spaniards. <laughs> so uh, here we are. Um, we are really launched uh, thanks to all the, the Belgian startups uh, communities. Uh, and we will announce in the next few months some other really, really, really great name uh, of our customers. Thank you very much. So what we will do, so that if you want, you can all have that on your screens or project it, whatever you want. JC will share the, the link through Pictowall, at Pictowall in Twitter, and then we'll all retweet it to make sure that you have it. And uh, if you want to talk with him and you want to talk business, it's a very good moment to do it. Uh, we have now reached the final point of our presentation. We're going to move to questions, if you have any. And if not, we'll give you the tackiest chocolate we were able to find in Brussels, with a mannequin piece in it. You know, he'll give you his head. And t-shirts. Any questions? Can put the hand up? There's one there in the corner. Space Invaders t-shirt. Yeah, Space Invaders. Cool t-shirt. Hello. Uh, Hi. I have one question, and it's about uh, your environment, about the startup hacker spaces and incubators and so on. Because I'm from Slovakia, and uh, it's happening there now. And uh, I want to ask you how, how long it takes to build such an environment. And, uh, and uh, what what will be uh, what do you see will be the next steps in 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 the building the communities and environments? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, what matters is not how long; is to start making it happen. Forget about dates. Forget about uh, when it's gonna really reach a certain point of maturity. You don't know. You cannot control it. It's like any startup. Just start making it happen. Create your first event, bring some people together, and try to get them to organize other events or to help you with that one. Then people will learn from the example that you're setting, and there will be more and more and more and more things happening. This is what happened to me when I first attended the Beta Group. You know, I just came out of my MBA. I only knew that I didn't want to be hired again, and that I wanted to do stuff with marketing and startups and technology. That's it. Internet, internet, internet. You know. And uh, I started, I discovered the beta group. It was the third meeting. I didn't even know anything, anybody there. I just saw the guy. I looked him up in, in LinkedIn, and I saw that he had created a Hispanics network in the US. You know, like the Facebook for, Hispa for Hispanos. I said, oh, cool. The name, guy name, nickname is Juanito. I think we're going to, we have something we can talk about, you know? I started talking and attending the events. And then not only attending the events, I started meeting people. And I decided, I learned, that's where I first watched somebody introduce the web mission. One of our members got invited to Google I.O. to pre present his project. Then what he did, instead of just going there and not telling anybody, is he talked with another guy, the founder of Storyfy. And they decided, OK, let's go together and let's try to bring some people with us. And just, you know, they organized the first web mission. They went to San Francisco. They organized that they, they, you could see videos with them presenting their product to Sergey Brin and to other people. That helped us a lot because people were saying, whoa, you can be Belgian and do something abroad. And be, people can look at you, you know? You're not just from a small country that doesn't matter. You do. You do matter. And you can do a lot of things. And that's watching that example, it helped. I decided to organize the same thing. But for EBE, which is the largest social, event, uh, social web event in Spain, it happens in Sevilla every year. It will be now in October, November. I'm, hope, I'm just waiting for them to announce the, the, the date so I can book my tickets. You know? And through EBE, I met the guy. Because I lost my train at EBE talking with interesting people, I ended up coming to the first co campus party in Europe. You see, there's a lot of uncertainty in it. But the more you do, the more that it will happen. Second part of your question was, what will be the next steps? The next steps is bringing in more people to participate. What we're doing now is we're trying to create more beta group events around the country. Okay? 
we, we, we want to have more people making things happen in their own town. It cannot be that only they can only think about coming to Brussels to organize their stuff. Brussels is awesome. I love the city. I fell in love with it. That's why I decided to stay. Okay, I, I've been living there for 10 years already. And I also love Madrid, my hometown. Huh? It doesn't have anything to do with love and hate relationships. It's just life is great there. And I really, it, I found my place. Okay? And there you will, you will find uh, uh, more events, especially directed via, via Julie, that will be happen. Another acts that we're working on is getting more volunteers and giving them different tasks and trying to grow people so they can take more leadership roles because there's not enough people coming out spontaneously. And we've had some people that have stopped doing the stuff they were doing because of life. More questions? Nobody? Then uh, come get your t-shirts and the chocolate. Uh, the show is done. Thank you for coming, guys.